So this is the gun that I've been carrying for the last seven years. It's a Gen 4 Glock 19 with a aftermarket stippled grip with all sorts of fancy cuts. I've got a Jaegerworks chop slide with, I think it's the breacher cut. I can't remember which one it is. I've got a tactical trigger inside of it, uh, which is like a lightened four and a half pound Glock trigger that is still drop safe. It's still the OEM shoe, so it's nothing crazy and wild. I've got a one MOA RMR mounted. I've got a mirror glow backup sights, stock barrel, and I've got some aftermarket components here on the side. And I've wanted to go to a new carry gun for a while now. I've wanted to transition to another pistol, kind of move away from this one. Uh, this has around 30,000 rounds on it. I'm very confident and capable with this handgun. Some of you guys have already seen some videos here on YouTube of me shooting this particular pistol. Uh, but I've wanted to go to something a little different. So the gun that I'm going to be going to is this right here, a West German SIG 228. And uh, I'm going to be going back to traditional roots, going back to a gun that's old. I don't even need a holster. I can just shove it in my pants. Uh, no, I'm actually kidding. I'm not going to be carrying this pistol. I'm sorry, Michael Weston fanboys. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is... Oh, 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 oh. And I'm from the department of... Um, but I am going to be shooting this gun today because I am curious to see how it compares to my next carry gun that I will be testing. And that is going to be another Glock. In this case, I have a Gen 3 Glock 19. Uh, this is a little bit different, but it's more or less same, same, but different. Um, I have an RTF2 frame, so I have stock stippling. I don't have a stippled frame. I, I do like the work that Stip Grips did for me. Um, I just personally prefer the texture of the RTF2 frame, and I also just prefer the simplicity of a stock frame without a bunch of modifications. I have a Zeb Duty slide, and the reason uh, I really like this slide in particular is it mounts a Trigicon SRO nice and low. And I'm using an SRO because I just really like the window. I like how large it is and how circular. I like the overall form factor. I like that I can load batteries without removing the entire optic and then have to re-zero the gun. And this is most similar to the pistol that I train with like 90% of the time on the range from my speed belt, uh, which is, again, a Zev Duty slide with an RTF2 frame that I did put skate tape on with a Trigicon SRO. So this is just a mini version of this that I will be shooting. Uh, but in order for me to transition to this pistol and use this as my new carry gun and carry every day, because I don't swap carry guns, I don't have like a little pistol for when I wear a t-shirt and I have a larger pistol for when I want to just, you know, have more bullets. Um, I, I really do keep to one handgun. That's why this gun right here is the one that I've really stuck with for forever and I don't swap around. Um, but this will be my, the, the new gun. Uh, but before I swap to this gun, I want to make sure this gun is just as reliable and I'm just as capable with this gun compared to my other Glock. So that means ensuring that um, it is reliable because I do have aftermarket parts in this gun, make sure they all work together properly, even though this is all based off of the Glock footprint and the Glock everything. Um, ensure that I, the, you know, the trigger's good to go, ensure that the gun is zeroed. And so my goal is to shoot this gun to about a thousand rounds. Uh, through a variety of drills to know what I can get away with and what I can do with this particular pistol and just to ensure that it is reliable. So we're going to go ahead and uh, start doing that, go through that process, shooting this gun, which is what I do when I move to another handgun. Um, but we're also going to be shooting it against this pistol uh, because this is one of my house guns. Uh, this sits next to my computer at home and um, it's also just fun. It's different. And yes, I grew up watching Burn Notice um, like some of you guys. And so and that is why I bought it. Okay, I will, I will confess. Um, so I want to shoot this gun as well, but kind of compare. You know, how does a OG original Glock 19 size, you know, this is the compact version of the 226 essentially, uh, how does this compare to a modernized handgun? So we're going to go have some fun. But let's get this guy zeroed first. Now, as far as zeroing a handgun goes, there's a lot of opinions online, but over the last... Ever since I've been shooting with a red dot on a handgun, which has been for like nine years, it doesn't matter as much as people think. You are not gonna achieve a perfect group to zero this dot just due to your ability to shoot a handgun. Handguns are very difficult to shoot well. Um, and generally the most important thing about zeroing a handgun is ensuring that your windage is correct. Your elevation is gonna change at distance regardless. So what I have found to be the most effective and fast for me, where I don't have to overthink it is, I shoot it like 10 meters into a square, in this case, like a one inch square. And the main thing I'm looking for is getting the group in line with the square, not even necessarily the elevation. Because what I'm looking for is I wanna go back to 25 and I wanna deliver shots into an A zone at 25. And if I'm doing that repeatedly, uh, consistently enough, I'm happy. Um, I don't have to like drill holes into eyeballs and stuff like that. As long as I'm getting good A zone hits and it's not like way off to the left, way off to the right, 
I'm happy. Um, and then the big thing about tweaking your zero on your dot is tweaking it as you go. If you're like, okay, I shoot at 15 meters a lot and I'm just always super, super low or I'm super high, that's when you make an adjustment. But the big thing now is I'm in line. This is my last group right here. I could go one click right probably, but now the moment of truth is going to 25 meters and shooting into one of these USPSA targets. So let's do it. Wow, I suck. This right here into the head box. I'll take it. Well, just as we shoot drills, but I'll take that 25 into a head box um, as like a fist size group is perfectly acceptable with a handgun, in my opinion. Um, so now we just get to shooting and we adjust as we go if we feel like an adjustment needs to be made. But, oh, but we gotta shoot the 228 now. 25 meters, see what we can do. Ha, okay, yeah. Nice group for 25, I'll take it. But, I aimed here. So at 25, I'm high. That's that's what I know. Um, with this particular pistol, if I shot it at 40, it would probably come back down. So good to know, but I have some information now on this handgun, and um, I'll take that into consideration. I am looking right here, and I am not seeing like the perfect sight picture, like two and one. I am looking here and I'm hitting where I'm looking, which is generally how it works. People don't, don't know that. Um, and I'm being very, very deliberate. And that is a double action pull. And that last one, the two before that were, it was like a 9.1 and a 9.3, and that was a 9.3. So sub second at five meters on, uh, you know, an Alpha Charlie zone uh, with a sidecar, double action. That's not bad. That's not bad considering I don't train with this gun ever. And those are, I, I'd take those. Much better hit. Okay, so a couple little mishaps there earlier, but got a little more dialed in. That's a 9.2. So I end up at five meters, the difference between the SIG and the Glock is there's no difference. Um, I'm shooting them both the same from the draw into a target of this size at this distance. Where this gun will start to win is speed, distance, and accuracy over the 228. But up close, doesn't really matter as it is for most guns. So now we're gonna shoot these two targets, same thing, two rounds and two rounds, so four. So we got some recoil management going on. We have a target in depth to uh, transition over to, and we start should start to see some difference between both guns. So, let's do it. All right. That was a 211. 246, okay. So I'm actually shooting this quite well. So two Charlies with the Glock I had all alphas. This group's not bad. A little bit better than the Glock, which in part of that's just I'm having to fo focus in a little bit more on my side picture with the irons. Two Charlies, that was in a 246, which is three tenths slower than my fastest, my last string with the Glock. So, all right, cool. People are gonna be like, just carry the 228. Ah. Two seventy nine. Three eleven. Okay, best time with this. Not bad. I actually did everything I was supposed to without forgetting. First run, 1281, Glock. Had a makeup shot, needed one over there. Thirteen sixty six. Only one second slower. Not bad, two alphas. We've got Alpha Charlie, two Charlies together. Okay, that was not as good. I've got a Charlie Mike on him moving, two Charlie in the neck. 
We've got all alphas, Charlie Delta. And then this is two Charlie. And then this guy, two Charlie, two alpha. So the biggest difference between a handgun like this and a handgun like this, in my opinion, is not the ergonomics, it's not how it feels in the hand, it's not, you know, all that stuff. It's the ability to call shots. It is far easier to call shots with a red dot on your pistol and know what, you know, knowing what's going on uh, than with irons. So shooting this course of fire that I just shot, they shot within a second of each other, uh, which is impressive for like an old gun um, and then a new pistol, which I've got 200,000 rounds shooting Glocks. I have, I don't know, 2,000 rounds shooting 226s and these, maybe three, maybe. Um, but, but the biggest difference is as I was running through and shooting this, I don't recall about half of my sight pictures. Um, especially on the close targets, I was kind of just throwing it up and blasting. This guy, when I walked through and I called where my makeups were, I called where my delta was on the first target and everything else, it was very vivid in my mind as I'm breaking the shot where that dot is on the target. So you just have a lot more information and it's just much easier to comprehend what's going on shooting a gun like this than a pistol like this. So my hits were uh, quite a bit worse with this gun shooting this course of fire. Um, I was trying to shoot it as fast as I saw a sight picture because that is how you want to shoot. Um, it just so happens that my sight picture was not exactly what I should have been comprehending on that particular target at that particular distance. I should have been a little bit more focused in on it and a little bit more disciplined. And if I had done that, this probably would have been more like a 14.5 seconds instead of 13.6. And that would have put me two, three seconds behind this gun for about the same hits. Um, and this is a fairly technical, not too complicated course of fire, uh, but it is 20 rounds and it did force me to reload. So let us continue. But that is one of the biggest differences with an iron sided pistol and a red dot, if you didn't know. All right, so that is a double bill drill Mozambique at like three yards or so in under two seconds in a 198. And I have first target, two alphas up to the head. Transition over, two alphas and one into the head. Not a box credit card, but hey, I'll, in two seconds, I'll take it. So we shot around 350 rounds out of the new pistol. Now this is not as much as I would like to. I would like to shoot around a thousand, but after shooting today with zero malfun malfunctions, no problems, uh, with the exception of me forgetting to chamber around a couple times due to just everything going on in the filming and all that. Um, this gun ran great. I've shot it through a number of different drills, some close range stuff, some uh, USPSA stages, which really uh, pushes the limits of your handgun. We've all seen it on Reddit, Facebook, Instagram, you, any forum, you name it. Someone claiming that their XD, their Glock, their Staccato, their, their Canic, their whatever has shot 50,000 rounds of no malfunctions. Uh, one, that is a very realistic uh, number to be shooting with zero malfunctions, even for a handgun like this, especially with the kind of ammo that's on the market. Um, generally, ammunition will have problems before the gun will, but you will have problems with your gun. Now, the reason people don't notice these malfunctions happening, and I've had this on my range. I've had people come out here and shoot weird pistols, have all kinds of malfunctions while shooting drills like we shot, but because we're in training and we're here at the range and we can just redo, they tap rack the malfunction, they fix it and, and they keep going and they, it never registers in their mind, oh, my gun just stopped working. I had to fix my pistol. And then they go and they carry that gun. Um, and the reason for this is if you are only training in an environment like this and you never go out and you shoot a match, it's really easy to get lazy when it comes to and not noticing malfunctions that are actually occurring on your rifle or your pistol. When you go to a match environment, and I've shot quite a few matches over the last 10 years, I've had to take a break over the last like six as the business has been growing, but when you go to a match environment where you shoot five stages, you only get to shoot them once, when you have a malfunction in one of those stages, it is a glaring problem that you want to fix when you go home. Um, but when you're on a range like this, and you can just redo your bill drill, you could redo your Mozambique, you can redo your three rounds in under a second from five meters or whatever it is, um, a lot of people just aren't registering that their gun is having problems. Um, and this is uh, obviously uh, you know, being disingenuous about how good or how bad your pistol actually is. And I've witnessed this firsthand, so I know this is the thing that happens. So today, one of the things that I was paying attention to with this particular pistol that I'm testing is, am I gonna have any malfunctions? Am I gonna have light strikes? Am I gonna have failure to feeds? Am I gonna have stove pipes? Am I gonna have uh, double feeds? Am I gonna have, is the gun gonna kaboom on me? I'm actually paying attention to all this, and the second I have a problem, I go, whoop, stop. What's the problem? How many rounds have I fired so far? Is that an acceptable failure rate for this pistol? And I only had that once where I got a click on a drill 
and I thought, cool, I just got a light strike, most likely an ammunition, uh, you know, deficiency, um, but the gun wasn't actually chambered, so it wasn't actually a malfunction, that was a malfunction on my part with my brain. So one, that's one thing to really take into account that a lot of folks don't. And then the second note, some of you guys are wondering, well, why on earth are you testing a Glock when you've shot over 200,000 rounds shooting the Glock platform already? Well, this gun is actually quite aftermarket. I have an aftermarket slide, which could have different tolerancing inside of the slide for all the guts. Um, I have an aftermarket trigger, which who knows what could happen with that. Um, the reason I wanna test this gun is just because it's a Glock with Glock parts, doesn't necessarily mean that this collection of parts will all tolerance correctly to enable this gun to work. And I would say this goes for any manufacturer. If you shoot a SIG P320 and you love it, greatest thing ever, you're very happy with your purchase, just because the P365 comes out or some other 50 variants of that gun comes out that you buy, you still need to test that gun because who knows what's going on on that manufacturing line? Who knows what's going on with the handgun? Just because it has a SIG stamp on it doesn't necessarily mean it's a that particular pistol is going to work great. So you still need to test your carry gun, especially if you're swapping carry guns every three months trying to find the new best thing. And I think as this video shows, at the end of the day, skill matters. It's the only thing that matters. I took a 228 you know, an old school pistol with no rail, no opting, no nothing. And I'm putting out some pretty, uh, com you know, good times compared to this pistol with some pretty decent hits. And I'm still shooting that gun with a high level of performance because I can actually shoot a gun decently. So if you can shoot a gun well, you train, you dry fire, you're somewhat disciplined at that, it doesn't really matter what gun you choose to carry, whether it's a Glock, a SIG, a Staccato, an m and at the end of the day, it all comes down to you. So. What are my steps moving forward for this particular pistol? I wanna shoot it for probably one more range day, bring it out, another couple hundred rounds. Then I'm going to take my defense ammo, whatever happened to use, gold dot, uh, 124, spear, you know, whatever it happens to be, shoot probably 100 rounds with that, ensure that the gun can cycle that ammo just fine, zero the gun to that ammo, and then I'm good to go. I feel confident and capable with this handgun, shooting head boxes at 25, shooting a course of fire like this, shooting on the move, reloading, my controls work properly, I can rack the slide and drop the slide just fine, um, I'm not riding the slide release as I'm shooting the pistol. Those are all the kinds of things that I'm looking for in a carry pistol before I actually put it on my body and trust my life or the lives of other people to it. Um, and the holster that I'm using for that is our sidecar. Um, obviously, we, this is the new version that can take different attachments. Um, normally, I am running the tourniquet attachment because it just makes a lot more uh, sense than the extra magazine. And then if I happen to go, you know what, I want an extra magazine, this, the retention on this one's a little tight, I'd probably loosen that. Um, I literally just take my mag, throw it in my pocket, go to eat sushi and I have an extra mag if I happen to need it. But the tourniquet is, I'm way more likely to use this than the extra magazine, but you have the option to do either or. So, hope this video was helpful. If you guys have any opinions or thoughts as far as testing concealed carry pistols goes, uh, leave a comment, uh, give us your information um, as far as what you think about how guns could be tested, should be tested. We're always interested to hear your thoughts um, because I would love to see the community grow in this area because at the end of the day, we're more likely to use this right here than the coolest rifle build that I know you guys are more interested in watching on YouTube. This carry gun right here, whatever you carry on your body and everyone should be carrying, um, that is what you're most likely to be using. So stay safe, train hard, and make sure you're dry firing.